Lay motifs, at their most basic definition, are musical ideas that represent external ideas. In the most classic examples of this, we have a single melody that plays whenever a character is being talked about, referenced, or directly in view. A lot of people, and I mean a lot, by the way, confuse this with theme. In practical terms, there's very little difference between the two, but when you're analyzing something, the minutia can make a profound difference. I like to think of leitmotifs as the idea, the theme as the full thought. Uh, think of it this way, with one of my favorite tracks from Final Fantasy VII, Tifa's theme. In this tune, we have a very clear theme that represents Tifa and her journey. We only hear it a few times, but each time, it helps us define and focus on Tifa as a character, and something that is important to us in the moment. That's a theme. The leitmotif that I would identify here is this little section. Notice I didn't just put the entire melody. The entire melody requires other components in music. Variation, tension, cadence. The main idea that drives the whole thing is just that simple rise of a sixth and back down again. Lay motifs are an old idea, with its origins in the early musicals and operas of the 18th and 19th centuries. It wasn't uncommon to hear a leading idea, quite literally translated to lay motif, played as a character was coming on stage so audiences knew who the hell was going to be singing to them now. The word itself wasn't properly used until the rise of romanticism in classical music in the 19th century. Composers like Wagner, Brahms, Schumann, Schubert used lay motifs to drive character dramas in their work. One of the most popular examples of a lay motif are from Hector Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. Let's talk about this symphony for a moment because it is rad. It's the story of a musician who falls in love with a beautiful woman, and consequently trips out one day and kills her. He's brought to the guillotine and beheaded, and then spends the last movement of the symphony in, in hell being tortured by the memory of her. It's hype as hell. What's really neat is that it's also one of our earliest prominent examples of leitmotif being used to great effect. Listen to this melody, which I've also isolated for you. Now, listen to this section from the March to the Scaffold, where our young musician is being brought up to be beheaded in front of the town. Tension builds, they're marching up the stairs, and... We hear it again. This is the young man's last thoughts before... Well, those bass hits represent his head bouncing down the steps to the ground. Our character's last thoughts are of this young woman, the love of his life that he murdered, and is represented beautifully in a single, solitary clarinet. You hear this theme a lot throughout the symphony, and it's always associated with this woman, no matter the context. Video games, with their narrative-driven styles, benefit greatly from a solid use of leitmotif, and one of my favorites is from 2015's The Witcher 3. What a great game, right? Not only do we get some intense battles with horrific monsters, but we get some really heartfelt character moments between Geralt and everyone in his life. From his interactions with Yennefer and Triss to his father-like relationship with Ciri, Geralt gets a lot of attention in this game. What you might have noticed offhand is that we are introduced to his theme right away. Like before, I'm going to isolate his leitmotif. It's a really simple melody in E minor, starting on an E and rising to a B before descending down a few steps. We are taught this right on the main menu, where we hear that rise played triumphantly. Starting up a new game, it's played on a flute in the background while we hang out with Yennefer at Kaer Morin. It's also played at some really poignant moments in Geralt's journey, my most favorite of which is during the community-dubbed Bittersweet Ending. Almost managed to forget it was today. They're here for me, Geralt. I'm going to Nilfgaard, to Emir. I know you didn't expect this, but in Vizima, my father and I spoke for long. 
argued, really, and parted. It's played melancholy over strings, with Geralt's heart breaking at the same time as ours as Ciri heads off to Nilfgaard to take on her new life. He doesn't want to see her go, and the pain is clear on his face, and in the melody as he watches his adoptive ward leave. You hear this leitmotif played lots of times throughout the game, but always associated with Geralt and his emotions in the moment. The composer does an excellent job of changing the instrumentation of it, the performance of it, to highlight what Geralt is going through in that moment. This is just one of the many examples from video games. Because video games have become such a story-driven experience, you can hear the use of leitmotifs all over the place and possibly miss them completely if you're not using all of your senses. What are some of your favorite themes and leitmotifs from gaming? And I want to try something new with this video. If you learned something new, send a like. If you didn't, click that little th down thumbs button over there on the right. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and send me a comment telling me what topics I should tackle next in the world of video game music. Thanks everybody, and I will see you all in whatever video comes next.